Purim Sameach, everybody. Let me know if you can hear me okay. Let me know if the uh, mic is not riding up my... It should be okay. So, I don't normally title my videos in the beginning of the video. I title them only when I post them on YouTube. So, this one... First of all, Purim, Purim Sameach, everybody. This one is entitled... Purim for Putin. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I, uh, you probably have kind of caught on by now that I'm a little bit, I don't want to say contrarian because I'm not, con you know, people who are contrarians are contrarians usually for, the, for its own sake, but I don't think in the conventional way about things, obviously. I don't follow the this herd, again, not for the sake of not following the herd, but just I don't follow the herd. I don't, I, Whenever I see a herd of people going in one direction, I say, okay, something must be wrong, and I have to investigate further. That's just my rule of thumb in life, in general, about anything. So, with that said, I, um, you know, and I, I just wanted to say that I argue with my family about uh, Putin a lot, and just about this whole thing, and I say, listen, you know, Putin's not the greatest guy in the world, to say the least. But uh, I'm sorry, but I, I, I find it difficult to swear absolute fealty to, you know, the government of Ukraine or even Zelensky himself. However, uh, during all of these discussions and talks and, you know, my mother said the best, she said the best thing. She said, you know, it's not the smartest thing for anybody, for any one of these like tyrants or dictators to start a war with a Jew right before Purim, in the month of Adar. It's, it's, not, it's not the smartest thing. And I said, I, you know, we don't agree on everything, but I can't agree with you more on this point. And here's where I want to bring out just a general idea. <clears throat> Guys. Um, you know, I was reading something by, from the Lubavitcher Rebbe, it was actually a transcribed, something that was transcribed from one of his, uh, I guess, Sikhas, from one of his talks, or from Brengen, in the year 5740, which is basically 1980, 1980, 1981, or 1979 even, and he was talking about, you know, at that time, Afghanistan, and something with Egypt, there was another issue with Egypt before the Arab Spring that Egypt had an, its own issue, a previous issue in the late 70s, early 80s. So I'm talking about all the different conflicts and all different, you know, kind of like uh, situations where nations are conspiring to, to go to war with each other. Not conspiracy theories, but conspiracy reality, right? Conspiracy realism. Like they're just conspiring. People conspire all the time, you know? to do this, to do that, you know, uh, you know, they even have a, what is it, we have a, we have a, people, you can be charged with, it's called conspiracy to commit murder, all right, not just murder, it's conspiracy to commit murder, you planned on doing it, you conspired, so nations conspire, this and that, they plan, and they, and they, and they go to war with each other, they, they agitate each other, they beat the drums of war, as we see, it's not just Ukraine and Russia, guys. We see, you know, we see with China and Taiwan, as I mentioned before, and it's like, you know, um, it's not a na it's not a separate nation versus separate nation. It's like India versus Pakistan. It's the same people going against themselves. China versus Taiwan. Same people going against themselves. Russia versus Ukraine. People going same people going against themselves. You know, it's it's like punching yourself in the face, right? Somebody's calling me, and I don't know why, but it's okay. Anyway, guys. Um, so yeah, uh, goodness gracious. So people conspire, but at the end of the day, guys, at the end of the day, you know, it actually doesn't have a, a lot to do with the Jews. And the person that's calling me won't stop calling me, and it's really annoying. It's really to do with them, like with each other, with themselves, 
and the Jewish people are are basically just stuck in this whirlwind, and we're 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 basically in the eye of the storm, you know. We're basically in the eye of the storm. You guys see, you know, Bennett went to try to mediate between uh, Putin and Zelensky, Put Putin and Zelensky. I'll say it in a Russian way, Russian pronunciation. Um, even to the point where Zelensky was like, hey, why don't we have this negotiation in Jerusalem? It's the craziest thing. And it even says, the Gemara even says that, that Jerusalem is not going to be hard. When, talk, when it's talking about Jerusalem, when it says Jerusalem, it's talking about uh, Iratika, the old city, right? And it's funny, they're not going to have a, if they if they have a negotiation, they're not going to have a negotiation in the old city. They're not going to have a negotiation on the Temple Mount or on the co- near the Kotel. It's probably going to be somewhere in, in the city itself, in the new city, right? In one of these government buildings or wherever, maybe Tel Aviv, maybe, maybe, who knows? Who knows, guys? But the point is, it's not about us, right? I mean, it revolves around us. It revolves around the Shem. It revolves around the Geula. It revolves around, uh, revolves around the Third Temple. It revolves around actually us coming back uh, to Israel. But you see, they're not attacking us. So far, the only ones threatening us are Iran. That's That's where the whole backdrop is appropriately set, right? It's Adar, this war started in Adar, Purim, but it's funny because everybody's distracted by this war, by Ukraine, you know, everybody's screaming, yelling, Slavo Karina, you know, uh, pledging undying fealty to Zelensky, to Putin, but guys, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, um, the backdrop is Iran threatening Israel. The ba- that's just a backdrop, right? So it, it just shows you guys, it shows us that Hashem is working behind the scenes of this whole thing. And uh, these people are going to conspire, guys. These people are going to have their plans. You know, America's going to get involved. Uh, you know, Tov Sheba Esav, Rasha Be'esav. All the sides, guys. You know? And people are going to be like, oh, Zelensky, you know, it's, a, it's just the funniest thing somebody pointed out. You have a country, Ukraine. Listen, not everybody there is anti-Semitic. Not everybody there is a Nazi, obviously. But it has a history of anti-Semitism that is being led by a Jew, you know, fighting in a war. And these people are have turned... It's just so, so funny to me how this little Jewish guy has been turned into, into an international super superhero. Into like a hero. I personally don't think he's a hero. I think he is a brave guy, but I think he's brave and stupid. And some Ukrainians got upset at me today for saying that. And I said, you know, they they showed a picture of Ronald Reagan comparing him to Zelensky, or comparing Zelensky to Ronald Reagan. I said, Ronald Reagan took down a regime, and they said, yeah, they're both taking down the, uh, the Russians. I said, one of them took down a regime without firing a shot, essentially, and the other one is doing something very, very stupid, and I hope he survives. And everybody got upset, and I guess I misunderstood what I said. But my point is, or my point was, that this guy is poking a bear. He's a piece of crap. He's a, he's a, you know, horrible person, to say the least, but he's a bear. And you don't poke a bear. You don't poke a bear and then ask your friends, you know, if you're, if you're a little bunny, little rabbit, and you're poking a bear, and now you're going to go ask your friends, you know, I don't know, the wolves to, to, to save you from the bear or other animals. Listen, you, the wolf doesn't want to get into a war with the bear. Or in this case, the eagle. The eagle is a predatory bird, but it's not, it doesn't want to get involved with the bear. Why? Lama. What's the, what's the point for the, for the eagle, right? Or uh, Europe, I don't know, the little, the, little uh, the wolves or whatever, you know, or the other, other little bunnies. They don't want to get involved. It's a bear. What, are they stupid? No. This little Jew, you know, this little bunny in Ukraine, he's a brave little bunny, but he's, I don't know, guys. It's like that joke, you know? With the bear pooping on the bunny's head. (laughs) Or in the words of Curly from, uh, you know, City Slickers, the bear can come up to the bunny and say, I crap bigger than you. Okay, 
Guys, listen, at the end of the day, though, at the end of the day, you know, it's not about the size of the the animal or the person, really. Uh, we know from the story of Davon Melech and Goliath that uh, it's not about that. And uh, I will just say that, yes, um, I think Putin, knowing that he knows everything about the Jewish people and about, at, at this point, I think he knows about our holidays as well. He should have known better than to start a war in the month of Adar. Especially when there were two Adars this year. He should have known better. But, you know, my friends, as we know, Hashem hardens the hearts of, of leaders, of, uh, especially of tyrants, of evil men. And He takes over their free will, or He just removes their free will. And they're going to do what they're going to do. And, um, and just remember, it's, it's not about us, the Jewish people. Rather, we're not involved. But at the end of the day, it's for us. It's not involving us, but it is for us, if that makes any sense. Anyway, guys, Borem Sameach. And uh, just understand that the energy of Purim pretty much lasts for the remainder of Adar. Right now we're in the middle of Adar, so let's see how things play out in the next two weeks in the run-up to Nisan and Pesach. And, and you know, today is we say al Nisim, which is a day of miracles, but kind of a hidden miracle. And uh, Nisan is open miracles. Nisan and Pesach is open miracles. And it should be very, very interesting, guys. All right. Purim Sameach, and I'll talk to you soon.